Okay, Shana Tova, everybody. It's nice to see all the new faces in Shul today. See, it's Judgment Day. Money's gone again, huh? So one way that we greet each other on this day is we say good yontov. Like we said really fast, so it sounds like we're saying good yontov. So good yontov to all of you guys. Happy New Year, Shana Tova. I hope you guys had a fantastic meal last night for your Rosh Hashanah meal. Uh, of course, we always eat special uh, symbolic foods on the day. We have fish heads. May we be the head and not the tail this year. We have beetroots. May our enemies be beet, etc., etc. I've heard the tradition that some people eat tires. Your car tires. May it be a good year. <laughs> 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 yeah. It's, yeah, it's very chewy, yeah? that's why you get tired from eating it. Alright, so today our main focus today about the fact that it's Judgment Day is that we have three books opened, three books in the forefront of our minds today. Hashem has opened for us the book of life, the book of death, and the book of the in-betweeners. So those that are completely righteous will be written in the book of life today. Those that are completely wicked can be written in the book of death today. Majority of us find ourselves in the book of the in-betweeners. And we've got the next 10 days to try and make our way into the book of life. On Rosh Hashanah it is written. And on Yom Kippur it is sealed. So the books are open and God willing all of us have made it into that book. But today I want to share with you a very, very interesting story about the book that's in front of you. This Machsor that we are praying out of today. I want to share, you, share with you a story you might have never heard before. It's a story... About the Jewish Pope. The Jewish Pope. Did you know there was a Pope that was Jewish? And I'm not talking about Peter. Let me tell you the story about this guy. So the story takes place, true story, a thousand years ago in the city of Mainz in Germany. There's a rabbi by the name of Shimon Bar Yitzchak. Rabbi Shimon Bar Yitzchak is a very known, well-known rabbi. In fact, we've actually prayed one of his prayers today in the Machzor. He is known for writing poems and prayers for the high holidays. So he used to write Piyutim, is what we call them, these poems. And we still pray some of those prayers till today. Now, as the story goes, he had a four-year-old son by the name of Elchanan. And one day he was sitting in his office writing a new poem that we're supposed to recite on Rosh Hashanah when his four-year-old son Elchanan entered the office while he was writing this poem. And the kid looked at his father, the rabbi, writing down this poem, and he said, Hey, wait a minute. That's my name that you're writing in the poem. So the kid saw the Hebrew letters that spelled out the name Elchanan. And he said, Dad, why are you writing my name in that poem? And the rabbi, the father, had explained to him, No, my son, your name is Elchanan, but the words that I've written in this poem are El Hanan. God, please have grace. Please have mercy on your people, Israel, for their sins. It's one of the prayers we actually read it today. It's a special one we read earlier today. Now, when the kid heard his father say that the words mean, God, please have mercy for our sins, he started crying. And he said, Tata, Dad, why would you write something about my sins in a poem that everyone has to pray? And the kid had a breakdown. And the rabbi had to calm him down and explain to him and say, no, 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 it's not your name, it's just the letters of your name, al Hanan. Your name is al Hanan, but I'm talking about God, have compassion on us. And he taught his son about the idea that no matter how far people go away from the Torah, how many sins they commit, Hashem always opens a gap for us to come back, and that is called Teshuvah. So he said to his son, I have to write this in this poem so that the nation of Israel, who have many sins, will ask Hashem to accept their repentance, to accept their teshuva. And eventually he explained it away and the kid was appeased. Now let me show you that exact prayer in today's machzor that we are using. So turn with me to, let me just keep my place, place here. Turn with me in, your, uh, in the machzor to page 1030. Or in the conjoined machsor, you guys are on page 260. And if you don't have a machsor, ask someone close to you to show you if you can, if you're close enough. Otherwise, just hang tight. We'll show it to you afterwards. In fact, in the, if you've got the, the art scroll machsor, actually is really cool because there they've actually emboldened the letters that I want to show you. If you've got the art scroll machsor, machsor, it's on page 268 of the art scroll. Okay, so the Rosh Hashanah machsor, page 1030. And then the uh, conjoined one, it's on page 260. Okay. So you see that it says Putim for the second day of Shacharit. We read it earlier this morning. The section about king, the section about remembrances, and the section about the shofar. Now what this rabbi did, and what many rabbis do, especially these, po these pythons, these guys that wrote poems, they write and sneak their name into the poem. 
So I want you to have a look at this in the Hebrew. So those of you that can at least, all you have to do is be able to identify the Hebrew letters and you'll be able to follow along. So have a look on the Hebrew side of the page. Right in the middle of the first line, you, it's got like a forward slash or a backward slash. It's Hebrew, so I don't know if it's forward or backward now. But anyway, <laughs> so there's a forward slash there. You'll see it's splitting the sentence in two. So there's three verses of this that have split the sentence in two. So the first letter after the, back, uh, after the forward slash. What letter is that? A shin. You guys see that shin right in the middle of the first line. Right? Jump down to the second line. Right after the forward slash. What letter is that? A mem. Next line? Ayan. Okay, so you've got the first three letters. A shin, mem, and ayan. Then you've got the chorus. Skip the whole chorus with the arrow. Skip that. Go back to the, go to the next three lines with the forward slashes. What's the first letter after that one? Vav. Next one? Nun. What does that spell? Shin, mem, ayan, vav, nun. Shimion. Shimeon, so it's the rabbi's name. Jump to the next, uh, skip the next chorus. And let's go to the next one with the three forward slashes. What's the next letter? Bait. Next one? Reish. What does that spell? Bar. Okay, Shimon, Bar, son of. Next one? Yud. And then jump the chorus. Go to the next one. Tzadi. Chav. Kaf. Yitzchak. Shimon, Bar, Yitzchak. So he wrote his name and snuck it into this poem, this famous rabbi that I'm telling you the story about. In fact, if you go back to the first, uh, the beginning of the poem is what, again, uh, and you look at the chorus this time. Have a look at the chorus. There's a little arrow pointing towards the chorus there, after those first three lines. What's the first letter there? Shin. Next word, first letter? Mem. Next word, first letter? Ayan. Next word? Vav. Next word? Nun. Shimeon. He did it in there again. Okay, so he wrote, he went and stuck his name into it. But now jump towards the second chorus. I want to show you where the kid saw his name. In the second chorus, you see the second place where the arrow is pointing. Can you see what is that first word? Yeah. Aleph and Lamed, right? You guys see the Aleph and the Lamed? The second chorus where the arrow is pointing. There's an arrow pointing straight to an Aleph. Do you see that? <laughs> no, yes, no, 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 yes, no. Sorry. Did I say second chorus? Sorry, it's the third chorus. My, my apologies. Lead us not into temptation. Sorry for leading you astray. The third chorus. Okay? You see the El Hanan. That is the El Hanan that this child saw that his father was writing in this poem when he came in and heard this story and got so upset. So hold on to that. We'll get back to that in a minute. So let me tell you the backstory of what happened with this family. So a few weeks later, after El Hanan saw his name in this poem that his father was writing, he fell ill. Deadly ill. So much so that the doctors told his family that the child will not make it. The child became bedridden. And as Yom Kippur approached, the parents were wondering, what are they going to do? Are they going to go to shul or are they going to stay home and look after the child? So they had a helper at that stage. And they asked the helper to come and watch him because he's bedridden. And the family went off to, Yom Kippur, uh, to the shul for Yom Kippur. And left the child under the care of their Gentile maidservant named Margaret. Now in those days, in Mainz, Germany... Anti-Semitism was running riot. In fact, there was a monetary reward for any Catholic who could convert a Jew, even kidnap a Jew and raise them in the Catholic Church. So when his parents went off to the Yom Kippur service, this maidservant Margaret kidnapped the sick Jewish boy al Hanan and took him to her house. When the parents came home that afternoon, the boy was gone. Can you imagine that? Coming back from a Yom Kippur service and your child's been kidnapped. Some say this is why the rabbi wrote another acrostic into this prayer. Go back to the name al Khanan we just uh, looked at there in the Machsor, at the third chorus. So it says, al Khanan Nachalto. What does the next word start with? A bet and a nun. So ben, so, so the acrostic here is al Khanan ben, and then skip, uh, skip the next word, lash, uh, lashpar, lashpar, skip that. The next word is Yidom. You see the Yud? So we take that Yud. So you've got um, the Beit and the Yud. Uh, sorry, Beit, Nun, and Yud. What does Bani mean? Ben is son. Bani is my son. So over here it says Alchanan, my son. Let's jump to the next chorus. You've got a Yud starting with Yira'e. You see it there? Then you jump down to the next line. Starts with a Chaf. Sorry, a chet. It's also the chet. And another yud at the end for the word yamim. That spells the word yechi. So, Alchanan, my son, may he. Let's jump to the next chorus with the next arrow. 
It says, L'chayei, which means may he live, Olam, the world to come, Yikosev, Yikosevu, may he be inscribed. So what this actually says here is, may Alchanan, my son, be inscribed for eternal life on Rosh Hashanah. His kid got kidnapped and he wrote this into this very prayer so that for generations and generations, at least in his generation, people will be praying for his son's salvation that he may make it into the Olam Haba. May he be inscribed for life. So they say that that's the reason why he wrote that specifically, that acrostic, into this prayer as well. Now, Child was kidnapped by the caretaker, right? And as he was in her little apartment, he became sicker and sicker to the point where his illness actually damaged his brain and he lost part of his memory, which of course worked out fine for the kidnapper. So she told him, your name is Felix. Never mind, Alchanan. Your name is Felix, Felix the cat. <laughs> and she told this kid that his parents died when he was born, so he never knew his parents. And he grew up thinking that this was the true story. A few months later, he had a miraculous healing from his illness. Maybe she took him to one of these healing things that the churches do. And Felix the Catholic was healed. He was back to being a normal, to, a normal boy. But he became an extremely brilliant child, smarter than all of his peers, learning faster than anyone else, and he soon became a bishop in the Catholic Church. When the current Pope that was alive at that stage was about to die, he told all the people around him that Felix... I want him to be the next Pope. And when that Pope died, they took Felix and changed his name and called him either Pope Victor III or Pope Victor II or Pope Andreas. It's one of those three. There's a dispute between our historians as to which one of them is the Jewish Pope. But those are the three options we have. He became Pope and we had our very first Jewish Pope. Well, not first, I guess. If Peter is the first one, he was the first one. But this is the, non, you know, the one that's not so well known. Which, you know, if you think about it, at least he was wearing a kippah his whole life. Yeah. Right? Popes wear a kippah. So, there we go. By the way, how do you greet the Pope on Rosh Hashanah? You say, good yontov to the pontov. <laughs> okay. So, as he was Pope, one of the things that happened while he was Pope, this uh, secret Jewish Pope, uh, while he was Pope was that uh, a certain town went and made a local degree, a local decree against their Jews, expelling all their Jews from the city. So, the local rabbinate decided to send some rabbis to the Pope in an effort to try and plead with the Pope and beg the Pope to overturn this decree in their city. So a bunch of representatives from the local Beit Din went and visited this Pope. I don't know what we call him. Alchanan, Felix, or um, any of those other names. I like Felix. It's a funny one. All right. So as they approached, one of these rabbis looked strangely familiar to this Pope. He listened to them and he heard them out. And when they explained that there was a decree against them to be destroyed from their city, he annulled that decree. He said, fine, I'll send a message to the ministers and counselors and I'll make sure that the Jews aren't forced to leave the town. But he was so intrigued by this one rabbi that was sent there that he asked that rabbi to please stay one more day and have a chat with him the next day. So the night went by and the next morning him and this rabbi sat together in his room for a meeting. He had the theological discussions. Philosophical discussions with this rabbi, he even challenged this rabbi to a game of chess. And as he was playing chess with this rabbi, the rabbi pulled out a chess move this guy has never seen before, that he thought only he knew. This pope thought he was the only man in the world to know this move. But the rabbi knew that exact move. Did you guys know there's a move in chess called the Israeli Gambit? Maybe it was the Israeli Gambit that he pulled out, who knows? And he was confused. So he asked the rabbi some more questions. He asked him, what type of hobbies do you have? And the rabbi said, I am what's known as a python. I write poems. I love poetry. And as he said that, the rabbi pulled a poem out of his jacket pocket. And he said to him, this is one of my favorite poems. It means the most to me. It's a poem I wrote because it reminds me of my son who was kidnapped many, many years ago. And the pope said, let me see it. And the rabbi said, oh, sorry, pope. It's in Hebrew. You won't understand. And the pope said to him, don't worry, for some reason I have an intrinsic love for the language Hebrew. I've been studying it my whole life. And he took that poem, and as he opened it, what did he see? His very name, al Khanan. And at that moment, all of his memories came back. And he remembered that day that he was standing in his father's office when his father wrote that exact prayer that we prayed here today. He burst into tears and told the rabbi that he is his lost son as his memory came back. And his father also cried. And he said to his father, 
I remember exactly what you said to me the day that you wrote this prayer when I asked you why you're talking about my sins. And you said to me, it is that no matter how many sins a person does or how far away he goes from Hashem, he can always come back to Hashem through Teshuvah, mm -hmm. repentance, the returning to Hashem. And the Pope said to the rabbi at that stage, I want to return to my faith and my people. And that Pope left the papacy like that. Disappeared. No one knows where this Pope went. He just disappeared. Jewish tradition says he lived out the rest of his life as a fully devoted Orthodox Jew. Amazing story, right? Yeah. Amazing, amazing story. And we just prayed the prayer that he actually wrote based on that story. Now, in a sense, the story has a part that can relate to every single one of you sitting here today. Because when our neshama was placed in our body before our birth, what was our neshama doing for those nine months in the womb? He was learning the Torah. There's an angel that's job it is to come and teach every little soul before its birth for nine months the entire Torah. And then when you get born, it touches you here in this little dip you have here. And that's when you forget the entire Torah and you have to spend the rest of your life trying to remember it, right? So your soul was learning the entire Torah before your birth. Then you got kidnapped by your parents. <laughs> and what did your parents teach you guys? Christianity. All you need to do is have liver yeast in your arki and you're sorted. <laughs> you were taught weird theologies growing up. Some of you became pastors. We have a few pastors sitting here today. Some of you were the head ushers in the church and walk around with your talit in the church praying for everyone in the Christian church. Some of us became a menace in our Christian schools. They had to ask us to leave. But no matter how far gone we have gone and how far we have been, even if you became the Pope, there is always teshuva return unto Hashem's Torah. That is what Rosh Hashanah is all about. A new year, a new start. A new you on Rosh Hashanah. Sorry for that. <laughs> but think about it. We should be just like Elchanan. We should also have a distant memory hiding here in the catacombs of our minds of our father writing our name in a book. Specifically a book that has to do with him forgiving us for our sins. What is that book called? The Book of Life. Today it is opened on Rosh Hashanah and Hashem wants to write your name in that book. And just as little Alchanan, or grown up Alchanan, cried as a grown up and cried as a little boy when he thought his many sins were being written in the book, so too we stand before Hashem today, trembling, asking Hashem to forget our sins. Don't write them in the Book of Records. We should have that same dread of being written in the wrong book. But remember what happened to Alchanan after he cried. His father comforted him by saying, God grants teshuva. God wants us to have the grace that we receive by doing teshuva. He wants to write our name in the book of good life. So much so that God himself did the same thing with his only begotten son. He sent Yeshua to earth and Yeshua was kidnapped as well. Who was he kidnapped by? Christianity. That's where he lives today. Even the Talmud says, where will you find Mashiach? He's in Rome. They've kidnapped Messiah as well. Why? Why did God allow this? So that one day, he could reveal the Torah to every single one of you when you were still sitting in that church. That vessel called Christianity that he used so that you could all return to Torah and come sit here today. And I tell you what, God wishes the exact same for every single one of us today as what Rabbi Shimon wished for his son, as he says in the poem, May my children be inscribed for eternal life. May you all be inscribed in the Lamb's Book of Life. Amen. Shana Tovah. Amen.